And I oh. think it would be very hard for anybody oh. to not have a moment of being taken aback. Oh, not even censored. Yo, this documentary is crazy, dog. Yo! All right, let's do this. <laughs> Gypsy Rose Blanchard speaks out after release from prison. I don't know anything about this person. Well, I know some things about this person, but not a lot. I know that um, she was a victim of Munchausen by proxy, had severe, like, you know, mental health issues, and uh, his or her mother was basically, her mother was basically, like, keeping her captive. They got a lot of donations as a consequence of that. Uh, they got a house. Her mother was poisoning her. Now, she's popping off because she, like, they had a Hulu series, I guess, right before her release. And uh, it came, I guess, during the time when everyone really got invested. Really got invested in true crime. So she's a bit of a legend because it seems like it seems like her uh, kill, she killed her mom with her psycho boyfriend at the time. Apparently sexually assaulted Gypsy Rose Blanchard. Um, is, I mean, she, she killed her and people saw that as like a valid kill, which I think it's it's fine. I mean, the boyfriend killed her, but she also was a complicit in the murder. Anyway, let's watch. So the Gypsy Rose Blanchard in her first interview after leaving prison for her role in the murder of her mother. She sat down with 2020 anchor Deborah Roberts. Good morning, Deborah. Good morning, George. Her dramatic life of tragedy and survival has just captivated so many, especially Gen Zers, in a way that very few have. Gypsy Rose Blanchard, who helped kill her mother to escape a life of suffering and abuse, has been the subject of countless media stories and a Hollywood series. Well, now she's a free woman, and she's telling her own story. I share my story to be a cautionary tale so that the next person that might be in a situation like mine, they don't take the route that I did. Gypsy Rose Blanche. Controversial opinion alert. I'm scared because there are so many, like, there are so many things that kids see on TikTok that they want to and even fantasize about like mental illnesses that they may have. I'm worried some Zoomer TikToker is going to watch this and be like, oh, I have the same situation and then kill their parents when their parents have not been doing that at all. Jared is finally tasting the freedom she's long dreamed of. Tell me about the day you stepped out from behind the prison walls. You don't realize how much you're restricted in prison. I felt like I was in a black and white world and I just stepped into Technicolor. Um, it, it was amazing. Her world shifting after spending nearly nine years in prison for helping plot the murder of her own mother. Gypsy, a victim of her mother's psychological disorder, commonly known as Munchausen syndrome by proxy, in which parents seek sympathy through the exaggerated or made up illnesses of their children. Since childhood, Gypsy's mother, Dee Dee, portrayed her daughter as frail, disabled, suffering from multiple illnesses, including leukemia and muscular dystrophy, subjecting the girl to life in a wheelchair, a feeding tube, and unnecessary surgeries, even having some of her teeth removed. It was all a lie. When you look at these pictures now mm -hmm. of Gypsy Rose, what do you think now? I, I don't even associate with that little girl. Oh, that's a brain dead take? That's like a 90s parent crying about blood and mortal combat? Yeah, you're right. I'm so wrong. TikTok certainly doesn't have the capacity to create, like, um, dangerous challenges. People who, um, people who, who definitely go out and buy a bunch of, like, ridiculous things that they see because it's popping on TikTok. They kill their parents? I'm just saying, like, mm -hmm. it happen. Girl anymore. Do you recognize her? I don't like I know that it's me, but at the same time, that isn't me anymore. Your mom has been portrayed as a monster. I don't believe my mother was a monster. She had a lot of demons herself that she was struggling with. Yeah, Jeter acting like the blue whale challenge never existed. It's all good. I didn't want her dead. I agree. And shooting random pedestrians in GTA builds serial murderers. Oh, there's very, there's a very real difference between something in the real world motivating people to do the same thing in the real world versus a video game that motivates people to be violent in the real world. There is no evidence for the second thing, video games motivating people to be more violent in the real world. But there's certainly evidence for the first thing, people seeing something and then repeating it in the real world. People seeing something in the real world and doing it in the real world.
Bro, that doesn't happen. The things that we just brought up, like the blue whale stuff is real. That did happen. What are you talking about? I'm not talking about art motivating people to do stuff, but copycats exist. Real reasons as to why, for example, people don't cover all the gruesome details of murders when they are happening. Why? Because people do copycat murders. I don't know why we're acting like a concept as old as the printing press itself is now somehow a new revelation. I don't know why. I feel like... I, I feel like today, more than any other day on this broadcast, I have a lot of naysayers. Now, I don't expect you to agree with every single thing that I say, but I do definitely, I do definitely expect you to, at the very least, think critically and make good counter-arguments. Not simply, bro, that doesn't happen, or not simply uh, making a comparison that is false. And easily disprovable. All I'm saying is, you know, think critically. I just wanted out of my situation. And I thought that that was the only way out. In 2015, Gypsy says she reached a breaking point and plotted with a boyfriend she met online, Nicholas Godijan, to kill her mother. Gypsy would later plead guilty to second degree murder. Godijan was convicted of carrying out the stabbing death and sentenced to life in prison without the possibility of parole. Is it fair? The Blue Whale Challenge was shown to be a fraudulent story that showed causal links where none existed. There was no evidence of any of the other claimed incidences being caused outside of influence. Okay, copycat murders are still real, though. All right, let's continue. Fair that he is incarcerated for life for killing your mom and you're out? Well, I'm sure that we both have a lot of regrets. All I can really say is that I did my... No, that's not how it works, okay? He's, he was, like, extra crazy, had priors... Totally valid, I think, as far as I understand, for for him to be in prison and and not be able to get out. You know what I mean? I feel like also I, I do feel like there are, you know, there's there's gonna be inequality. Like at the top of the hour, there's a three minute break. And it's unequal because, and it's unjust because some people actually end up seeing the three minute break. Some people luck out and only see one minute of ad breaks. And then some people don't see any ad breaks at all because they've subscribed for $5 or for free. So, you know, it sucks to suck, but that's usually how it goes, right? That's just kind of the way the cookie crumbles, if you will. Sort of at the blue whale now from seeing, it seems like a ghost story has been used to link unrelated suicides. Do you know any, un do you know any confirmed accounts of it? No, I just remember, uh, I remember reading about it and believing it. Uh, it can totally be one of those like old internet legends. Uh, that, that part is uh, totally valid. It still doesn't change the reality that, yes, people do see things in the real world and want to repeat them. And I think people are still jumping on the, the blue whale thing over and over again. Like this person. Copycat murders existed before TikTok, though. Exactly. And I think people are just trying to, like, jump down my throat. To be like, oh, dude. Like, I got you. But... But then you also made my point for me. I never said TikTok is the exclusive reason as to why people do stupid things that they see. TikTok certainly does, alongside many of the other uh, social medias, uh, uh, have a tendency to exacerbate the things that you... Like, exacerbate the worst aspects of our harmful behavior. I think I'm going to stop responding to people in the chat and continue watching this. My time... He's doing his time for his part, um, and I wish him well on his journey. During her prison stay, public fascination with Gypsy exploded. Her story portrayed in multiple documentaries and a drama series, The Act. I'm so trapped. Yeah, by the way, I never was saying that like there's going to be a massive amount of people who think that they're... Uh, that have Munchausen by proxy and killed their parents. I'm simply saying that this could absolutely lead to a copycat thing that I worry about, but it could also not. I don't know why everything has to be this massive debate, guys. I hope you guys understand that you probably shouldn't behave like this in the real world because it will lead you to have zero friends. One aspect of, like, debate lord existence to to, to just never have real friends in the flesh world and only have friends in internet forums like you don't have to debate the veracity of every claim even if i'm making like an offhanded remark not everything has to be all that serious we're talking about some true crime shit don't have any friends on the forums either yeah
I can't tell anyone. Gypsy now sharing unscripted personal details about her past in a Lifetime docuseries, The Prison Confessions of Gypsy Rose Blanchard. You say that you were addicted to painkillers. Mm -hmm. How serious was this addiction? You know, this is, this is really hard to talk about um, because it took me down a really dark path. Um, but I felt like it was my only way to cope for a time. So when you made this decision to take part in the killing of your mom, were you high? Yes, I was. And do you blame that for your decision? No, no. Um, I don't blame drugs. I don't blame anything. I don't make excuses. And now? And now I'm sober. Now I haven't, I haven't used in four years, and I don't feel the need to. Hey everyone, this is Gypsy. I'm finally free. Her journey sparking a cult-like following online. Do you feel any conflict with that? You've got fame, even though you participated in a murder? Of course I feel conflicted. Um, fame is not what I'm looking for. Um, I always said I think I'm infamous, and then I came out famous. You've had shots of your selfie out of mm -hmm. prison. You've commented on your <laughs> love life. Are you enjoying the attention? Honestly, I'm a very shy person. I don't think that I'm doing anything that anybody else wouldn't do. I'm being myself. Ryan Anderson, her new husband who wrote Gypsy in prison, was waiting outside the prison doors after his wife's release. Oh, I missed you. <laughs> I missed you too. But you're really together physically for the first time. Yes. Uh, we call it newly together with. What are your plans? Do you want to have children? We've talked about starting a family. We just don't know when at this point. Um, our lives are pretty hectic right now. So this is your happily ever after, the gal who liked being a princess. It is, yeah. I had to kiss a couple frogs to get to this one. Handsome face. Murderous frogs. What the hell? We gotta watch the view clip. Wait, what? She's on the view too? Watching right now. Please listen to me. Heed my words that you are not alone in, in, in this, you know, situation. There are other ways out. Um, I did I did it the wrong way. Um, no, so, no, no, no. you know. Don't say that. I, but I did. No I did, choice, I did really. something wrong and I, I paid my dues for oh, you it. Mean that part. Yes, the part of it, oh, yeah. you know, that part of it. <laughs> yeah. Where are you Never going mind. with this? Yeah, yeah, no, no, no. no. <laughs> Like, oh, you didn't do anything wrong. <laughs> Just a little bit of murder. <laughs> no. You know, so I did some. All right, does anyone have like a good story on this? Does anyone have a good. Her IG post about people bullying her husband's looks? Yeah, I saw that. Gypsy Rose Blanchard defends uh, husband Ryan from negative comment on, uh, comments online. Ryan, don't listen to the haters. I love you and you love me. We don't owe anyone anything. They jealous because you are rocking my world every night. Dot, dot, dot. Yeah, I said it. The D is fire. Happy wife, happy life, heart. Meanwhile, her ex-boyfriend got life in prison. Yeah, bro, her ex-boyfriend's a bit crazier than her. You know, I don't understand why. I feel like a lot of people just see stuff on Twitter and just... Wait, oh, he responded, who said I give a damn about what these jealous people say anyway? Ha ha, dot, dot, dot. Now, come get it, baby, dot, dot, dot. What is going on? That post is fake. Kill a Trav. What? I want to know, like, what happened with Gypsy Rose. A little nice little true crime action. I kind of want to watch it, like, here, but now I want to skip to a point that's, like, relevant, that where we're at, you know what I mean? And I feel like it would be over here, I guess. <laughs> Anyway, the three minute ad break is upon us regardless. Because they were stories that resolved in happy ways. And ultimately, her story was not resolving in a happy way. Wait, is she also a subject matter expert? Who has the. I liked the Disney movie Tangled. It's about Rapunzel. She's a princess of this kingdom. And. She's kidnapped by Mother Gothel um, from her real family. And Mother Gothel keeps her in this tower for all of her life and tells her, don't leave this tower. And so that is all she knows. I think that Gypsy just wanted her life to be like any fairy tale.
Oh, is the BuzzFeed reporter who first interviewed her? Okay, respect. Tail princess and have the perfect ending. You know, all the bad villains get what they deserve. At the end, Mother Gothel died. She got thrown out a window um, because Rapunzel tried to stand up for herself and leave her tower. But in Disney movies, everything's a fantasy. It's a fairy tale. And life is not a fairy tale. I learned all that the hard way. Damn, she got interviewed in prison? Life sheltered would do it justice. I've kind of come to describe it as a, a fairy tale nightmare. Mom already f***ed up when she called her kid after a slur. Yeah, that's, I think, the most problematic thing that she did, honestly. Like, the other stuff is one thing. That's a big no-no. That's what I was thinking, too. Her mother controlled almost every aspect of her life. The control was total in the same sense that the control of a kidnapped victim sometimes is total. Her daughter was, in essence, a hostage. And I think we can understand the crime that occurred subsequently in terms of a hostage trying to gain escape. Okay, but also, Anytime why did she do Gypsy that? and I were together, her mom... Chatters, you're about to find out, I guess, the hard way that, especially in America, most people don't know that that is a slur. Like, they don't care. And, and people that do also don't care. Like, straight up. Was always present. She was immediately like a filter for us, you know, like Gypsy wouldn't talk about anything personal while we were together. That's like really the big red flag, thinking back on it all now. Dee Dee would always hold Gypsy's hand, you know, it was like, I don't know, it was almost like, you know, just if I squeeze it, you'll know what to say. I mean, that was just so strange to me. Just to feel now, I think that was really strange. Even in videos I've seen since then, I'm like, yep, it's the same thing. It's like she's holding her hand. I mean, now I'm, it was maybe a control thing. The hand holding and the tight hugs is a way of asserting mastery over another person and saying, you're not free. You're under my control at all times, even in relatively benign situations like are being photographed getting the habitat for humanity the tolerant europeans have no derogatory word for roma people no dude where are you coming from that you're like this this ferociously defending like the roma people okay no there there is a word of course in europe at least they know what like the roma people are to be racist towards them my point simply is that my point simply is that in america people don't even know what it is that's the difference People have no idea what a Roma person is. Be home. You know, those are innocuously happy occasions, but there were also occasions where Dee Dee reasserted her mastery over Gypsy. My mom had to. If we were in a group of friends, you know, if I said something that I wasn't supposed to, she'd squeeze my hand. And I know. It's like that. I was just afraid, just too afraid. I have a strong feeling that the extent of the control over her, heavily psychological as it was, would have involved physical punishment as well. She'd hit me with a coat hanger, um, or her or her palm, um, and I'd have to take so many slaps for depending on what, how severe it was that I did. Did you ever try to hit back? Never, never. It's like if you have a baby and you like get in its face and the baby starts to struggle and get away from you. Now picture that happening for your whole life. Right? Your mother is just in your face and will not get away. It, that's Why has the LGBT community adopted Gypsy Rose so hard? Because they love messy bitches with drama and there is nothing messier than murdering your mom. Like... That's, are you kidding me? That's like, that's a lock. Like, what do you mean? 100%. They're like slay queen, literally. Literally. It's like being the peak of being a girl boss. No, be serious. No, I'm not joking, man. What?
What are you talking about? Oh, Miss Gypsy Rose Blanchard is ready for that drag race guest judge gig. She was the sweetest. She would eat. Please be serious for once. I'm being serious. Basically what Gypsy's whole life was like. It's snowing. I'm not joking. They said it's snowing. So I'm staying under my heating banky. <laughs> and I'm not getting out. <laughs> She wants to get out. <laughs> Ain't gonna happen. Let her dog take care of her. Oh! <laughs> that we <means> so <laughs> Her mother was so suffocating, so powerful, so manipulative that Gypsy may have felt any efforts to escape were bound to fail. The first time I ran away from home, I had met a friend. We both went to this sci-fi fantasy convention called VisionCon. I had told him vaguely about what was going on at home. And he told me, you know, um, you just pack your stuff and um, you can come live with me in Arkansas. And That's terrifying. he said, okay. A fate worse than death. Living in Arkansas. I snuck out, got a ride from a stranger, and went over to his place. And then within like four hours, my mom found me at his place because we had mutual friends in common. So she was starting to call the cops on him. And she took me back home and smashed my computer with a hammer. Yeah, I mean, that's valid. Said, if you ever try that, okay, to be fair, the fact that. The fact that she didn't call the police is odd, especially because he didn't originally call the police and instead was like, come live with me, vulnerable young girl. I am your friend. Like, that's the only time when the mom was like, kind of like, no, this is my thing. Like, fuck you, okay? I'm the one who gets to abuse her, not you. I do that again, I'm gonna smash your fingers with a hammer. It was a rough year. I call that the bad times. She had taken this dog leash and- Hassan, don't start with the mom. I'm sorry. I'm afraid this is the one instance where the mom is like kind of correct. She was over 18. Yeah, not mentally. At that point, like she didn't think she was over 18. She's being like purposely drugged. That mom ain't ever correct. Dude, that's such a wild ass take. You were speaking from a really privileged position. Many people who had abusive parents who were traumatic as fuck. I'm simply stating I don't think that dude was actually honest and had good intentions. I don't think that dude who said, hey, vulnerable young girl that I met at Vision Con, I have good intentions in, you know, getting you to come and stay with me. No, if he had good intentions, he would have, like, probably called the cops, right? I'm sure he didn't, but it was probably better than the abuse you received. Wait, what are we? Wait, whoa, 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 whoa. No, aren't they still together, though? No, this is a random person. What? And um, clipped it to a pair of handcuffs and then clipped the handcuffs to the bed and kept it was like that for about two weeks. My mom had actually convinced a lawyer to draw up some papers saying that I was incompetent. So I thought if I had tried to go to the police, they'd look at these papers and say, She's, you know, she's retarded. She doesn't know what she's talking about. Whoa, canceler. Gypsy has essentially. That's a double slur, dude. Her name is Gypsy and she said the R word. Fallen through every crack there is in the system. The Greene County Sheriff's deputies came out to the house on an anonymous report that Gypsy was potentially being abused. And they came to the house. They spoke with Dee Dee and Dee Dee did exactly what she does all, all the time. She manipulated the police officers, showed them a few things, and they left. That doesn't mean it's her fault. Wait, what? Why, why would I ever blame her? What? I'm not saying it was her fault. I'm saying it, the guy is a bad guy. And at that point, Gypsy has absolutely nowhere else to turn. Literally everyone failed her, literally. The doctors who were positioned as there to help her didn't help her. Her father, who I think was in a very difficult position, couldn't help her. How was she supposed to think anybody could? I was just kind of at that point where you're like, I'm angry at the world. 
and this is unfair. Why couldn't anybody figure this out before it got this bad? Chelsea, Over here, baby. <laughs> we all kind of did see how Gypsy was being treated by Didi. Not that it was like horrible, uh, beating the shit out of her in the back room with a freaking cable, you know? She was just, she put her in a wheelchair and told her, oh, you, you, your leg's messed up. You can't walk. Her sister told me once, Rod, what? you know, she, uh, Gypsy can walk. And I asked Didi about her. She's like, well, well, you know, with her, with her muscular dystrophy or with her disease, her, her muscles hurt sometimes. So sometimes she can walk when she's feeling okay, but it's, it's progressive, it's, it's gonna get worse. And uh, it wasn't long after that that they were, you know, they started moving further and further away. And, you know, there's nobody, nobody there to question, question that anymore, you know. After um, all of the doors had been closed, uh, family, friends, the police, I think that Gypsy had, felt she had no other, no other avenue. Go, John. I met name. Nick through a Christian dating website. He was one of the. Date a pastor, meet single pastors near you. View profiles 100% free. Damn, bro. Dudes who are six foot do need a nerf. You know what I mean? Profiles that I had saw. Thought he was cute, so I checked him out, sent him a wink. He sent me one back. Damn, that is not Christian like at all. Okay. What is going on on these websites, man? They're sending winkies out on Christian websites, on Christian dating websites. They got winks. That's, they need to. What? The winky. Once you met on there, what what happened? Um, we uh, got closer on there, and we uh, connected more and more. The way that we clicked, we somehow just knew we were right for each other. Four days later, we uh, started a relationship together. Gypsy had no... Oh, cringe. Do they still talk? No, man. He's like a serial offender and also in permanent prison he's in perma jail oh gross this uh, this right here is oh so template for romance that wasn't this sort of heightened prince charming narrative and nick just happened to be there his background equipped him with a bad narrative in different ways so it was like two bad narratives collided with each other what kind of what kind of person is somebody never met? What kind of person is that? He's pretty quiet to himself. You know, I mean, we always tell him he's got to get out and, and go. You know, I'm sure a lot of people were just like, oh, I'm afraid he backstabs everybody, backstabs him. Yeah. He has autism, you know, he has burgers. And that's has he been diagnosed with autism yeah. and has burgers? Yes. yes. Okay. Last doctor he talked to, they said his mind is probably always going to be 15, 16, right around there. At first, it was all lighthearted, you know. If you got married, where would you like to have your honeymoon? You know, where would you like to get married? Where are all the places you want to travel? Different things like that, normal stuff. And as it progressed, things got weird. <laughs> um, he started talking about something called BDSM. Oh my God. Oh my god, wait, can I not- I probably- is it implied nudity or some shit? Wait, he said we can relate to this from opposites of it, sweetie? Oh my god, bro, he's into furry shit? Yo! Yo! I'm gonna be honest with you, I feel like this dude is built like a hater of mine. Uh, like, I feel like a decent chunk- I feel like a decent chunk of my online haters are- are are literally built exactly like this mother 
from the mental illness side all the way down to like the physical output is just like everything down to the unique interest in BDSM furry shit. At first I didn't know what it was, so I looked it up. <laughs> Once I looked it up, I was like, I don't want to do this. <laughs> and um, then he kind of just taught me into it. And it's like, it'll be fine, you know, to try this with me. And so um, I agreed to it. I'm embracing my role in duties. I'm learning more about myself. I am confident and fulfilled. I live in breath to serve my master. My soulmate has the most desirable voice ever. It's like he could say anything. I was taught that a woman's role is to be submissive and the man is dominant. So I didn't think. Yes, baby, does it make me think? This does make me think of you as Belle, my princess Belle. Outlandish. That you would be. Then his ex had um, messaged me and she told me, you know, he's a really bad guy. Um, he thinks he's a vampire and he's into all this dominant, submissive stuff. And I was thinking, it's just an ex, you know, she's just bad mouthing him. She doesn't know anything. She's jealous, blah, blah, blah. She was right. Go to John also has a criminal past. In 2013, he was arrested after investigators say he was watching pornography and fondling himself in a McDonald's restaurant for nine hours. Police finding nine hours. Yo, nine hours gooning at McDonald's for nine hours. OK, like obviously gross, very illegal, definitely should go to jail. But a part of me is like, that's impressive that you were able to masturbate for nine hours. How is that possible? I feel like my dick would evaporate, dude. After the fourth hour, I'd be like, my forearms have given out. I've used both arms at this point. This guy is the moderator of the goon cave. This guy is a lethal gooner, okay? Like, the fact that it's in public comes secondary to the impressive feature of nine hours of just punishing your meat. It makes no goddamn sense. Yeah, Nicholas Goon John more like it, dude. What the hell? This makes no goddamn sense. A large knife during the arrest. I really don't know what's wrong with him. <laughs> Bro, okay, let me tell you something. Motherfuckers that work at McDonald's don't want to stay inside of a McDonald's for nine hours, okay? Like, every part of this crime makes less sense than the prior part. Okay, he was inside of a McDonald's for nine hours masturbating. Where is the stamina? How does he find the stamina? But I mean, it's not like I ever had a boyfriend before. So I really didn't know what was a normal re relationship. I don't know how much he told you about me, but there's actually multiple personalities of myself. Have you been diagnosed with that? I probably should be diagnosed with it because it has happened. The thing is, I used to take a medication. Okay. I used to hear voices in my head. Okay. And it went away, and then it somehow went as part of myself. Okay. So, does Gypsy know that? Yes. Okay. She does know that. Okay. His multiple personalities would come out, and um, he had talked to me one day, and he was just like, you know, I would like my other personalities to have a girlfriend. So I made up some individual personalities to match his other personalities. The one inside of her, his name is Kitty. It's like a little girl inside of her. I was scared, I thought. You got another one called Candy. She has an evil side of herself as well. Just to call her uh, Ruby. It was deaf, dumb, blind love. And sometimes it's a bit crazy love. One of the most interesting things about this case is that no matter how much control you have over an individual, you can't stop adolescent sexuality from blossoming. And her whole life, this had been a subject that was forbidden to her. And ultimately that turned into a really destructive force. We would die, kill, do anything for each other, but he's the only person that I've told all my secrets. Probably about a year into our relationship, I just couldn't lie to him anymore. And I just told him everything. 
Why did nobody know she could walk? Uh, her mom, uh, wanted everyone to know that she was like 16 the entire time. So, okay. yeah, she felt kind of trapped <laughs> on a, a wheelchair when she, when I actually was trying to encourage her to be able to walk more and more and more. It really didn't come up like, I want you to kill her. But he had said, I'll protect you from anybody. And I said, anybody? And he said, yeah. And I said, even my mom? And he said, yeah. And that's where it kind of developed from there on. We'd call it plan B. But we always pushed it back. You know, it was just a thought. It was never a reality. We'll consider other options. We had planned a meeting at the movie theater. I and my mom was gonna go see Cinderella, the live action version of Cinderella. And I was like, this is a perfect time for us to meet. Yeah, 5909, I'll, buy your I'll ticket, remember. And you come to the movie theater, we'll meet. Like we're just meeting as new friends and it's gonna be perfect. She wanted to have sex with me, so I did. Okay, she wanted to have sex with you? Yes. Wow, did her mom know? Um, <laughs> we shifted from her mom. Okay. <laughs> Where did you have sex at in the theater? It was in a bathroom. Okay, in a girl's bathroom or boys' bathroom? She just took me to the boys' bathroom. I didn't have any choice. I went right into the boys' bathroom. I'm gonna see if okay with it. Okay, okay. <laughs> And then what happened after you guys had sex in the theater? Um, uh, we uh, went to our movie and watched it. They're all looking at you. Believe me, they're all looking at you. I don't know what it was, but apparently the night got wound in some way. I, I couldn't, I was trying to understand what was going on with her mom. She despised him. She was like, he's creepy, he's weird, he's coming to see a kid's movie alone by himself. And now looking back on it, yeah, it is weird. <laughs> we were the only people at the movies, and he didn't have a kid with him or a girlfriend. Or no. Once again, mom is right, but like also wrong at the same time. You know what I'm saying? Like, very weird. I'm not agreeing with her because I know the outcome and I know what her motivations are. But like, I do totally. Yeah, it just everyone sucks except for Gypsy. Nothing. He's just this guy going to see this chick movie. <laughs> Couldn't you have said that you have a friend and you want to introduce them? Well, I would have had no way to meet him. You know, I can't say, you know, I met him online or she's she was all the time with me, so. It would be no other time to meet him. Once all of those... She's not right for the right reasons. No, she's right for the wrong reasons. Like, I think she's like, no, this is my thing. Like, I get to abuse her and nobody else. You know what I mean? Like, she was right for the wrong reasons. Like, she clocked another abuser from a mile away because she was like, this is my territory. Move the fuck on. Do you, do you feel me? Do you understand what I'm saying? <laughs> Plans seem to fall apart. I just got desperate. Go John is a crazy last name, by the way. Why oh, you say that, baby? Because I finally allow myself to accept you're my everything. I will go with you and live our dream. He took a Greyhound bus. I managed to scrape up enough money to pay for him a ticket. I'm in Springfield. And the next day, we went to the grocery store, came back home. Whenever I see, like, American suburbia in the fucking Midwest, I'm like, no, no shit. There's so much murder, death, and destruction happening, bro. It's so goddamn ugly. No character having ass starter homes left and right. These are the lucky motherfuckers that actually do have homes, by the way. Situation's way worse. Overall, god damn, dude. I'd be doing opiates, too. I'd be doing opiates left and right, bro, if I had to live here. What the hell? She went to sleep very, very late. And I was up texting Nick. I have to close outside the front door and the screen door is squeaky, so I try to open it enough just to get it close to gentle. I'll hand you the knife and duct tape inside, darling. Oh my God! 
I'm doing my nails too. I'm painting them a dark pink. We paint each other's nails. And I acted like everything was fine. Bro, people hate living in Missouri so we bad they murder their moms and, and shit. Argument. And we had made up. Bro, what do you mean caveats and top of the hour ab breaks? Brother, we did that already. I did that so long ago. And I said I was going to be a good girl. And then she, when she went to sleep, I guess I heard her feelings or something. And she said, I'm starting to feel more relaxed. Don't hurt me. The last word she said to me was, don't hurt me. <laughs> I'm here, and you get your ass to the bathroom. You open the door, he said. Um, murder coming, by the way, in like a minute. <clears throat> I went yes, sir, the I'm going, sir. I got kind of in a fetal position, and I covered my ears. And, um, and I heard my mom wake up. And then she sounded startled. And... There was some noises that I can't make out. And I heard her say my name a couple times. And, um, and she said, help me. And then there was just silence. It's coming. Did she scream? Oh, God damn. This is about as do. clear a premeditated murder as God, I've ever seen. They just straight up show the body, Chad. It's brutal. Oh, my God. And I oh. think it would be very hard for anybody oh. to not have a moment of being taken aback. Oh, not even censored. Yo, this documentary is crazy, dog. Yo. Bro, they link, please. Link, please. You should be put on a list. Many different holes poked inside of this woman named Dee Dee in Missouri. It's bad. They just straight up show you. Dave, though, what the fuck? How did you not know that? Or no, someone in the chat told me 5509 to 5530, they show the body straight up. Do they do it again? To be fair, she also they also showed her, like, butt pics. So Got that was weird, with too. D? No. You didn't stick your penis anywhere on her? Nope. Are you sure? Yep. Positive. I'm 100% positive. Okay. Uh, did you stick your penis in her mouth? Nope. Okay. Did your penis touch anywhere on Dee's body? Nope. Okay. Did your mouth touch anywhere on Dee's body? My mouth, no. Okay. You didn't kiss her? Or nope. Lick her or anything like that? Nope. Okay. What do you think about people that have sex with dead bodies? It's quite disturbing, honestly. Okay. That's just, that would bother you? Yeah. Okay. I'm sorry, what are these questions? I think, I believe, if I'm not mistaken, he said some stuff like, like how he wanted to have sex with the mother's dead body. And she said, don't do it. Gypsy Rose said, don't do it. Do it to me instead. And then he assaulted her. So trigger warning on that. I don't like necrophilia. Okay. Because I think one of the things that she might have said was that you had mentioned that you'd like to rape her mom. Yeah. At one point I was thinking about it. Okay. Bro, that is way too casual, dog. What is happening? He's so casual. Why is he like, yeah, oh, I was thinking about it. Like, bro, you said it like you were thinking about, you know, buying a pack of smokes or something. I had wanted to rape my mother. That's what he wanted to do. He was like, I'm going to kill her, but I'm going to do it my way, and I'm going to rape her. So what I did was I made a deal with him. I'd let him rape me, and... um and then he wouldn't, he wouldn't do that to my mom. So you guys have sex? Yes. And what kind of sex? What, what is sex like to you? Well, it... well to me, um, the, the kind of sex that it was, it was pretty much, uh, although 100% consensual. Is okay. What I'm looking for. Yeah. Like, I, are you biting her? Are you punching her? Are you... No, no, I would never lay my hands on okay. her. Okay. I didn't even bite her at all, actually. That, not for a long time, that is. Um, the very first time she whispered in her ear uh, that that was a turn-on of hers is biting. 
I've been here twice. Okay. The first time I can't remember. The second time I can remember though because I bit her a lot harder the second time. Okay. However, uh, she seems to still enjoy it even when it was really hard. Technically, Aww. once we got to that point, I screamed for him to stop and he didn't. So I don't consider it to be consensual. I barely felt any pleasure, actually. Okay. All right. Is there a reason you didn't feel pleasure? Uh, I don't know. It's really hard to say. I did make her uh, have her an orgasm once. Okay. And then after that, I she might have blew me a little bit. And then after that, I think we stopped because uh, we realized there was a lot of packing and stuff to do. Okay. So you guys get everything packed. She wipes down the fingerprints. And then what do you guys do? Uh, we, uh... Get a taxi and we get to the hotel. <laughs> that podcaster portrayed this as consensual, by the way. No, that podcaster didn't portray this as consensual. The podcaster portrayed uh, the first time they had sex as consensual. Also, I don't know if there's going to be nakedness here, but. Mm. Hi, honey. <laughs> this is one day after the murder. They're chilling in a hotel. I'm feeling it. <laughs> <laughs> oh, his booty, his booty cheeks kind of show a little bit. <laughs> He's eating a brownie. <laughs> but later he will be eating me. <laughs> I love Shit, Nick very here. much at that time and being with him felt exciting because it, I was with someone I loved and I, someone I thought cared for me. I think Adam's here. We took a Greyhound bus back to Wisconsin. Yo! My mind wasn't thinking back to what was at my house. I just kept thinking, I'm free, I'm free, and that excitement of being free and walking. I always referenced myself to this little blue bird that was trapped in an invisible cage. And I felt like this blue bird was set free. Did you guys talk about your future? What was your plans for your future? Um, we wanted uh, uh, like a family together and we wanted to uh, um, build a life together. And so we thought we really had a chance to do it. So okay. we were happy about that. Okay, they can hear you now. Hi. What's your dog's name? Kaya. Kaya? Yeah. Does your mom and stepdad know what games? you did? It just means rock in Turkish. So far. Ladies and gentlemen, uh, we're gonna we're gonna interrupt this uh, this this broadcast where we were watching the Gypsy Rose Blanchard documentary. Do you know who this is? She killed her mom, right? Because her mom said she was sick. Yeah. Was like, she, uh, what's it called? Babe, what's it called? The, what the, where the Munchausen by proxy. You're sick? Munchausen by proxy. Yeah. But this is what, I mean, no offense. I don't know if I'm going to be offensive, but this is what I like to refer to as girl news. It's when, whenever there's something like my, my girlfriend will like wake me up and she'll be like reading the news already and like terrified. She'll be like, oh, a baby committed suicide yesterday. You know, and I'll be like, I don't. A baby committed suicide is girl it's news? It's girlfriend news. It's girlfriend news, right? Okay. I feel yeah. like this is, this, this Horrific, makes Horrific, awful things. <laughs> that are that are in the newspaper somehow. See, people are already being anti. I just read how the do you sports get, page. How do you get Nick Kroll? This oh is your fan God. base. This is your fan base, one hundred percent. My fan, Nick yeah. Kroll. No, my fan base would say our Bach Max Fry probably. Okay. <laughs> well, all right. Remember, this is on Twitch. We have I'm different sorry. set of standards. It's it's a sentence. Okay. I'm Jewish. Okay. It's a sentence. Okay. Not according to Chelsea Clinton. You're not. All right. Oh.